there is no way you can measure and understand the level of greatness of our God. And that's why this season I want you to believe strongly that all this greatness that we are attributing to the men that have ever lived, that we know our God has, that we will all take part in all these things. Amen. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In Exodus 15 verse 7, Exodus 15 verse 7, we read that our God is great in excellence. He is great in excellency. But then when God comes here today as we speak, we all will know that everything that we are doing will be confused. Mm. It's not the same thing as similar. It can, you can, okay, maybe you can compare it to when some people see their idols, like Michael Jackson, and then they start fainting. Mm -hmm. But the Bible makes us understand from the book of Chronicles that when there was a dedication of the temple and God decided to show up, everything stood still. The pastor forgot his sermon. The various ministers, they did not know what to do. They stood speechless because of the excellency of God when he came in. Brethren, I am believing God for someone here to this. That you will experience this kind of visitation. Amen. This is in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the time he steps into your, uh, your, 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 your affairs, I can assure you that every other power that is tormenting you will remain visited. Amen. And they will be paralyzed. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So God is great in excellence. Our God also has a great arm, according to Exodus 15 to 16. Exodus 15, verse 16. The arm of God is so powerful that when he wants to use it for you and against your enemies, they cannot be able to contest his powers. When he uses that arm to work for you, things become easy. When he uses that everlasting arm to begin to support you, you can never fall. Amen. When he uses that arm to begin to fight and work for you, the enemies have only one option, and that is to do what? To surrender. And brother, that is what I'm believing God for somebody here today. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is equally great in mercy. He is great in mercy. Numbers 14, 19. Numbers 14, verse 19. Says that God is very great in mercy. And brethren, when God is shown, God decides to show you that mercy. It is not the kind that we are talking about that man will show you some level of mercy. We are talking about the kind that every of your sins, God decides to turn near his face away from it as if it did not happen. It did not happen. Brethren, may that be your portion this season in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is great also in power. In power. Psalm 79 verse 11. Psalm 79 verse 11 says that God is great in power. And I don't need to tell you from the records that we have in the Bible, the list is endless of where God displayed his power so marvelously that no one is able to contest with him. Individually, we as human beings, we have seen where God has shown himself as a great God in power, whereby he fights and he gives us victory. Brethren, we don't need to ask for that. He, our God is great in power. Who can contest his power? Nobody. Nobody. May he use that power for you this season. Amen. That when the Lord stands up for you, yeah. all your enemies will do what? They will scatter. Amen. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. That's the kind of God we are talking about. And brother, I want you to believe that. That he will rise up for you this season. Amen. The enemies have been seen before. As from today, you will see them no more. Amen. Because the power of the Lord will work for you. Amen. And you will celebrate. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God is equally great in love. Very great in love. He loves us so much that even when we are not yet known to him, he made provision for us to be reconciled to him. 
He loved us so much that he had only one begotten son, and he decided to sacrifice him so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. He loved us so much that he said that there is no other love than for a man to lay down his life for his brethren. That's the level of love that God has for you and I. And that is perfect. That is perfect. That love is still there, brethren. The love of God for you is still there. If you think no one loves you, I want you to think again. For he loves you so much. He does not want to see you suffer. If only you can just surrender to him. And based in this love that he is ready to give to you. Anytime, any day. In the book, in the book of Luke by the Lord wrote. And in another scripture, he equally wrote. That even if your father and your mother will forsake you, what will he do? He will pick you up. He will pick you up. That is the extent of love that he has. What is it that is making you to feel as if you don't know God loves you? Why do you feel that you don't have any hope? Why do you feel that you cannot make it anymore because God has abandoned you? He has never abandoned you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Mm -hmm. Weeping may endure for the season, but joy comes in the morning. By force it will come. It will come because God loves you. God loves you. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is equally great in size. Isaiah 66 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. God is great in size. I was watching TV a couple of days ago. And the man said that they have just discovered a new planet. A new planet that has water, has sea, has oxygen, just as we have here on Earth. And then the person said that there was there is some there's a little catch to it. It will take humans 360,000 years to travel to that planet. Okay. That was a laughter that I also laughed when I had it. 360,000 years to travel there. That is the lifespan of how many people? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can imagine that. What is there any use? No use. How did he get there? That's the how is he gonna get there? Three hundred and sixty thousand years. But if you come to look at it, you see how great our God is. A place that will take you 360,000 years to travel. That is just one portion. One portion of what God is holding in his one. Um, one portion, not even the whole portion. Just one portion of what he's holding in his hand. You are talking about the size. You see giants, you get scared. And the one who created giants. The one, the Bible says that God is seated in heaven. Hmm? He's seated in heaven. And where did he put his foot? On the earth. See how long his feet are? For him to put his foot on the earth, that means that his feet is as long as from earth to heaven. And there are different, there are different kinds of heavens. But he, he occupies at the very, very topmost of the heavens. So if you are talking about size, our God is great. But the most interesting thing is that when you have this great God we are talking about on your side, it reminds me of when I was younger and then some people are trying to beat me up. I will be shivering, I will be shaking, 
As soon as I see my senior number, I come. I said, come now. I will beat you. <laughs> he doesn't know that he's going to ask my senior number, I come. <laughs> so when you have this big God we are talking about on your side, who is that enemy? Oh. Which circumstance that is making you to fret? What are you going through? that you think can never be dealt with. That great man is behind you. He is behind you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that being the case, we almost begin to rejoice that we have an ally that is greater than any other thing. An ally. Someone who is on our side. Someone who is ready to fight for us. Yeah. May his name be praised. Let's give him a prophet.